Welcome to the Pub Sports Radio, Ian Cameron Sports Report for Monday, November 16th. It's a brand new week. We're going to recap NFL and college football. We'll start in the NFL. We had some craziness. We had some antics. We had some shenanigans going on yesterday from a point spread perspective, from a totals perspective, and obviously the two games that stand out in that regard. Arizona, let's start there. We know that was the game of the day, the finish of the day. An incredible football game between the Buffalo Bills and the Arizona Cardinals. Back and forth it went. The Bills got off to a good start in that game. Josh Allen in the offense, moving the ball, coming up with good red zone defense and holding the Cardinals to three field goals. But Kyler Murray and the Cardinals offense got it rolling in the second half, started making plays, took the lead. Uh, really good performance from Kyler Murray. A pair of rushing touchdowns. If you had the Kyler Murray touchdown props and if you had the uh, – Confidence to take him to score multiple touchdowns. You really cashed a nice plus price on that one. He played very well, but Josh Allen, game on the line, needed a drive, down three, late fourth quarter. He gets that drive done for the Bills. A great drive and a great throw to Stefan Diggs for the go-ahead touchdown with 34 seconds left. And you think, here's Josh Allen. He's done it again like he did against the Rams uh, earlier this season. A game-winning drive late in the fourth quarter, but this wasn't a game-winning drive because Arizona said no and came right down the field. Kyler Murray, a couple of completions to put them in position for the play, the play that's getting talked about and getting all the attention uh, the last 24 hours. The Hail Mary heave from Kyler Murray, rolling out to his left, just firing the football downfield to the end zone as far as he could go, as far as it could go. And there is DeAndre Hopkins, like a basketball player, boxing out for the rebound. Uh, boxing out three Buffalo Bills defenders for the ball. His height, his size, his physical advantages come shine through. He gets the catch. Touchdown Arizona. They win the game. But to the horror of anybody, unless you took Arizona on the money line, to the horror of anybody that took Arizona minus two or minus two and a half, or minus three even, because it got that high at one point. They take a knee on the extra point try, and Arizona wins 32-30. Brutal if you had Arizona minus two, minus two and a half, or minus three. At least if you got the minus two, you pushed. But nevertheless, that's a just a horrendous result if you were on the Arizona Cardinals in that game. They get the win, but depending on when you bet it, they may not have gotten you that point spread cover. They didn't get you the point spread cover, actually. It's just a matter of did you push or did you lose? But Arizona, in an incredible game, get the victory there. And a very, very uh, dramatic point spread finish. The game also goes over the total. The other one was Houston and Cleveland, where Cleveland gets the 10 0 touchdown to cover the, to, you know, be now in covering mode uh, and in position to maybe cash a ticket as minus four. Favorites, four and a half is actually where it closed. Houston goes down, gets a touchdown. So Houston back inside the number, trailing by three. And then Cleveland trying to run out the clock. You probably don't think you're in great shape if you're Cleveland. You probably expect them, okay, they'll get a first down or two. And, and that'll be the end of the game when we'll let Houston will cover. Well, lo and behold, Nick Chubb gets to the outside, somehow gets up down the side on gets along the sideline evades the last tackler that could have caught him and there he is running free down the sideline touchdown browns but no it isn't he steps out at the 1 yard line first and goal texans out of timeouts less than 2 minutes to go you know what's coming next it's knee time kneel down city uh, in cleveland heartbreak city for those that had Cleveland minus four, and I did have a piece of Cleveland minus four in that game, and I know people are going to be livid. And at the mo at the very moment it happened, I was livid too with Nick Chubb saying, "What the hell are you doing, man? Get the touchdown!" But in and nobody's going to like to hear this if you had Cleveland minus four yesterday. But from a we're trying to win the game, forget the point spread for a second. From a we're trying to win the game perspective, what Nick Chubb did made sense because if you and even yeah, if you score there you're up 10 and you still should win the game but you still put the ball back in Houston's hands where they could maybe quickly drive down the field punch in a touchdown and then you got to sweat out an onside kick if you're Cleveland 
to win the game and, and hang on to victory. If you step out and you kneel down, you don't have to worry about Houston getting the ball back. You can end the game and win it right then and there. It's hard to fault Nick Chubb's decision. It sucked for anybody on Cleveland, including me. I get it. That's if she pisses you off, and I'm I was angry about it, but he made those. He made the right decision for his team. He did, and you've got you can't just cloud your thinking saying, you know what, he screwed me out of betting cashing this Cleveland bet. So what he did was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. He should have scored. I wish he would have scored. We all do. Anyone with Cleveland minus four wishes he would have scored. But he was making the right decision in terms of the team and winning the game. He was. You may not want to hear it. You may not want to admit it if you were on the Browns. But what he did was the smart decision. It was. It was just like the decision Todd Gurley made two years ago when he, you know, slid down before the goal line. And it was also the wrong decision Todd Gurley made a few weeks ago with the Atlanta Falcons against Detroit. You know, he made the right call for his team, Nick Chubb, there. And it was. It sucks. It's it's brutal if you had Cleveland in that situation. It's a terrible result. It's an awful way to lose like that because you're thinking, oh, he's gone, he's gone. And then all of a sudden, it's you turn and he steps out, uh, or detour, I should say, uh, and he steps out at the one-yard line. It sucks. It's brutal. It's terrible, to, uh, you know, if you had Cleveland to lose that way. But for me, from a football decision standpoint, in terms of winning the game for your team, putting the team first, he did that, and he actually made the right call in that regard. Sucks, but I think that's the way I see it. But nevertheless, because of that decision, yet Cleveland wins 10-7, but Houston ends up cashing a ticket for their backers. Uh, other results from NFL Sunday action, uh, Detroit doing Detroit things. They blow a lead. They hang on to win 30-27, to 27, but the blown lead was enough for Washington to get the point spread cover uh, as Detroit only wins by three. Washington was uh, getting three and a half, four uh, for most of the week. How about the Green Bay Packers? A sleepwalk effort against Jacksonville, but they do hang on 24-20. And the Jaguars and Jake Luton, since he's taken over as the quarterback, 2-0 against the spread. How about that? Now, he hasn't. He definitely wasn't great yesterday. I thought he played a lot better against Houston than he did yesterday, but the weather wasn't great. Uh, nevertheless, Jacksonville has you know not rolled over, and they've given you some effort the last couple weeks, which has led to the point spread cover. Giants beat the Eagles 27-17, winning outright as home underdogs. Um Philadelphia just not really good on defense yesterday and the offense, even with all their parts back, looked out of sync. But again, a lot of these injured players didn't get a lot of practice time. Let's see how they look next week as they take on Cleveland. The Bucs and Tom Brady bounce back from a blowout loss to the Saints and just annihilate the Panthers 46 to 23. Dominant showing from Tampa Bay. Uh, Las Vegas keeps rolling on. This is one of my greatest regrets of the day. Uh, I, I bet this game over the total, and that was it. And I was leaning to Las Vegas, and I said on the NFL show with Connor and Ski yesterday, the closing time show, with it down to two and a half or minus three on Vegas, I, sh you know, I was tempted to bet Las Vegas, and I didn't. Everybody loved the spot for Denver here, and Denver just not competitive, not even in the game. They lose thirty-seven to twelve uh, to the Raiders. Drew Locke was hideous again; uh, was becoming a recurring theme for him. Uh, and a problem for Denver. Uh, Miami keeps rolling. There's another game. Well, I did have the over. This is one of my top plays yesterday in the NFL was the over in this game, but I should have bet Miami too, and I, st I stayed off it. I mean, it was staring at me in the face too. Miami, the team that just finds ways to win, and the Chargers, the team that just finds ways to lose. Uh, and that's exactly what it was again yesterday. Steelers rolled to a 36-10 victory. You got to give Pittsburgh credit. You got to give Big Ben credit. Didn't practice at all because he was in COVID uh reserve list protocol and he comes out there and he just obliterates that Bengals defense really impressive uh Seattle losing 23-16 to the Rams I took a chance with the Russell Wilson off a loss trend Seattle off a loss which has been excellent over the last 10 years but they've now lost two in a row and they've got issues the offensive line the defense still can't get stops Russell Wilson interceptions again yesterday plaguing him. So he's had the back-to-back -back rough games, which doesn't happen very often. Drew Brees, even though he gets injured, Saints uh, roll past the 49ers 27-13. We'll have to see his status moving forward. Uh, Baltimore, New England. Baltimore injuries mounting. The Baltimore concern is mounting about their play on the field. 
and it continued after a 23-17 loss on Sunday night football to the Patriots. And now, the, like I said, the injuries are mounting. They've got offensive line injuries, a couple key defenders out now. You've already lost your starting left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, uh, indefinitely. Uh, it's not looking all that uh, rosy right now for the Baltimore Ravens. And uh, we'll see if they can rebound following that loss to the Patriots on Sunday night football. We'll preview Monday night football uh, in just a bit. Vikings and Bears. Uh, let's do the college football recap very quickly. Indiana, no look ahead to Ohio State. The Hoosiers rolling over Michigan State 24-0. The defense suffocating the Spartans. The offense with Michael Penix uh, Jr. Uh, played well. Uh, the Miami Hurricanes rally to beat Virginia Tech 25-24. 20, uh, uh, a very good win for them there. Notre Dame, another team, uh, avoiding the letdown after the huge win against Clemson. Uh, their offense was just up and down the field the entire game against Boston College, and, and they beat the Eagles 45-31. That game flies over the total. USC survives Arizona 34-30, and I watched a lot of this game. They survived in spite of themselves. They were making mistakes left and right, uh, penalties, undisciplined play. Uh, but Keaton Slovis, when the game was on the line, he needed to get a touchdown drive together. He got it done. This is a really good looking quarterback here for USC. And he was very good when he needed to, when he needed to be once again, just like he was against Arizona state uh, last week. So two close wins. It's a reminder though, USC, not a team you want to trust laying points. That's two weeks in a row. Yeah. Two and zero straight up, but zero two against the spread, both games laying significant chalk, not the kind of team I trust laying big points uh, this USC team, but they get the win in both games. Another good win for Northwestern, 27-20 over Purdue. Uh, Arkansas, for the first time this season, failing to cover a point spread. They get absolutely obliterated by Florida, 63-35. to This freight train for the Florida Gators, this offensive freight train with Kyle Trask, who is now the betting favorite at most sports books to win the Heisman, you kind of can understand why. He has been magnificent. And even after a huge win against Georgia, Another team that did not show any sign of a hangover or uh, taking a, the, this opponent lightly or easily. Uh, they just uh, up and down the whole game, Florida, against that Arkansas defense. Oregon comes back to beat Washington State 43-29. I'll say this, even in defeat, Washington State under Nick Rolovich, I thought this team was going to have a tough time, a rebuilt defense. And to see them play as well as they have the first two games, impressive. Tulsa comes back to beat SMU 28-24. This game was really good for me because I had Tulsa before the game, and I had a couple of in-game bets on Tulsa after they fell behind 21-0, knowing SMU can't be trusted to hold a lead, knowing they almost blew a lead of this size earlier this season against Memphis, and they had to hang on to win that game as well. And the SMU defense, again, fell apart second half. Tulsa's offense got going. Tulsa's very good defense neutralizing and shutting down Shane Bouchelle after a rough start and they come back to beat SMU 28-24. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, the nightmare continues for him in Michigan, 49-11, a pathetic performance uh, at the big house against the Badgers. Pathetic is really what it is. I don't care it's a pandemic. I don't care that you lost most of your defense. I don't care that you have a new starting quarterback. That's pathetic for Michigan, a program with that kind of history and tradition, to go out there and get thumped 49-11 to by Wisconsin to that degree. That's a shame. That's a disgrace. And if you're Michigan, you're getting uh, absolutely uh, fed up with Jim Harbaugh, and I can't blame you uh, at this point in time. So those were some of the key uh, results for college football. That's your weekend football recap. Uh, let's go to Monday Night Football now. It's Minnesota-Chicago, uh, NFC North Divisional Battle here. We've got the Minnesota Vikings, three to three-and-a-half point uh, road favorites here at Soldier Field. After this game opened initially, Chicago is a slight home favorite, the total 44 in this game. And the reasons for the Minnesota move, you can understand. Since they're by, Minnesota's come out and played really good football. They beat Green Bay outright as big underdogs on the road at Lambeau. They annihilate the Detroit Lions last week. Two really good wins in a row for Minnesota, and they look good in both games. And I think people are maybe are sensing that this team may be a team that's a bet on and a buy sign on this Minnesota team right now. I don't necessarily disagree. And when this line opened Chicago minus one and a half as home favorites, I was nowhere near betting this game and not nowhere near interested betting this game. But now we are talking about a 
you know, we're talking now a three and a half to four point line move now toward the Minnesota Vikings here uh, in this game. Um, and look, if you got Minnesota, pick them minus one. All right, good. But we're talking now laying more than a field goal, minus three and a half in most spots here with Minnesota. And now I'm at the point where I think the line's gotten a little carried away. I think it has. And at three and a half, I have to take something with Chicago here uh, in this game. Now, I know what I'm getting into here with Chicago. Everybody knows what the season has been for the Bears. They're five and four. They're coming into this game on a little bit of a skid. We know the offense has been a problem all season. Nick Foles, Mitch Trubisky, it really hasn't mattered who the quarterback is, to be honest. The offensive line can't run block adequately enough. The pass protection's been shaky. I don't think the skill position talent on the Bears team has been great. The running back position's been banged up all year, and David Montgomery is not going to suit up tonight uh, for the Bears at running back. There's problems on this offense. I do understand that. But here's what I have a, why I'm worried and don't trust Minnesota now laying more than a field goal. It's Kirk Cousins on the road in the cold. It's Kirk Cousins in prime time on Monday Night Football, where, by the way, he's 0-9 straight up in his career on Monday Night Football. And how's Minnesota have their success? When they win games, how does it happen? It happens when Dalvin Cook is the focal point of the offense and they can run the football with a great deal of success. That's when Minnesota wins games, when they can run it, they can run it successfully, and they don't have Kirk Cousins having to carry the team offensively. Well, Chicago, can, I think, can do a pretty good job against the run here tonight. They can at least neutralize him. This is going to be one of the better run defenses that Minnesota has faced the last few weeks since their bye week. Green Bay can't stop the run, the first opponent off the bye. And last week, Detroit, they have problems stopping the run consistently either. Chicago is a better run defense than either of those two teams so if Dalvin Cook's even neutralized a little bit, Kirk Cousins is going to have to make plays through the air, on the road, outdoors, against a pretty, still a pretty good defense. Say what you will about the Bears' offense, but their defense can still play. It's a solid group. I don't trust him to do that here uh, against this uh, Chicago defense here tonight. I know I'm putting my uh, eggs in the basket of the Chicago Bears' offense, figuring it out with all the issues they have, offensive line injuries, running back injuries, quarterback that's you know okay not great whether it's Foles or Trubisky but what I do like for Chicago is Matt Nagy to me has been a source of these problems as well on offense with some really vanilla boring dull uncreative play calling well now Bill Lazor has been given the play calling duties moving forward for the Bears and he was most recently the OC for the Cincinnati Bengals a few years ago and he's one of the few guys that actually got a pretty good offense out of Andy Dalton you know, a couple of years ago, there were some games with when laser was coordinating that offense, Cincinnati was able to make some things happen offensively. It's not going to be overnight, but I think even with this short, you know, it only was announced, I think late toward late last week that Bill laser was taking over the play calling duties. I'll tell you what, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. It can only help this Chicago offense, just having a different voice, a different mind calling plays now for this team. And maybe it's going to create, you know, different formations. Let's see some different looks thrown at the defense rather than the same old predictable shit. You know, that's exactly what I'm looking for out of Bill Lazor now as the play caller, because that is, I think, a pitfall that Matt Nagy fell into far too often. Um, so for me, it's Chicago here plus three and a half. It's not a top play or a best bet or anything, but I think now with this line having drifted as high as it has on Minnesota. You know, I can't ignore the fact that Cousins has been a, this has been a miserable opponent for him, this Bears team and this defense. And I, I think the Bears now certainly they're desperate. You know, they're they're five and four now. They can't afford to you know fall back to five hundred. They need a win in the worst way. I think you're going to get whatever the best effort is out of the Bears tonight. You'll get it. The question is, will it be enough? We'll have to wait and see. But I am on Chicago now here, plus three and a half on Monday Night Football total forty four. Uh, tricky with the total because I think Chicago is going to try to do a couple different creative things, maybe open it up just slightly. So if you want to have a proactive thought process, maybe a slight lean to the over here. But again, betting a Chicago Bears game over the total, I'd rather see them get a game under the new play caller first before I rush to think they're all of a sudden going to be lighting up the scoreboard. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. As far as player props go, I'll have them posted on Twitter right after this show is recorded. Um, I'm looking at 
Uh, I'm looking at Darnell Mooney for Chicago, receiving yards and receptions. This guy has got some things going with Foles in the passing game. Foles targets him a lot. He's made some plays. Uh, I think he's a good way to go. I think Nick Foles' completions is a good way to go over pass completions because I don't think the run game is going to be all that effective for Chicago because they're banged up beyond belief there at that position. Uh, I think from a Minnesota perspective, uh, Dalvin Cook, not necessarily I, – I wouldn't talk you out of rushing yards over for Dalvin Cook because they're going to want to run the football. I just don't know how effective it's going to be because the Bears, decent against the run. I like Dalvin Cook's receiving yards over because I think they're going to use him in the screen game a lot. Kyle Rudolph, you know, Bears do struggle at times to defend tight ends. So Kyle Rudolph, I think, is in play from a, a, a prop perspective on the Minnesota side. So those are some of the ones I'm looking at here. And Darnell Mooney, last I checked, is around plus 250 to score a touchdown tonight. I mentioned him early, uh, just a second ago. It's plus 250 to score a touchdown. You better believe that'll be one of my touchdown scorer props tonight as well uh, between the uh, Bears and the Vikings. Good solid price and value with him, in my opinion at plus 250, Darnell Moody. All right, that'll wrap it up. Thank you to everyone for tuning in uh, to be to, on our first uh, show of the week here, the Ian Cameron Sports Report. Uh, reminder, I'll be back tomorrow uh, to, for the Tuesday edition. We'll look at the MAC football card for Tuesday and Wednesday, all the MAC college football games. Uh, I'm also going to talk a little NBA tomorrow because there's been some uh, trades, some uh, moves, and some news that has been reported today. Chris Paul, James Harden. We'll talk a, a little about that on tomorrow's show as well. So join me tomorrow for the Tuesday edition of the Pub Sports Radio, Ian Cameron Sports Report. Thanks for watching. As always, have a great Monday night. Good luck with all of your wagers. Enjoy Monday night football. And I'll be back with you tomorrow on Tuesday for another edition of the Pub Sports Radio, Ian Cameron Sports Report.